Okay, here we are in section 7.6. I skipped problems 1 and 2 because those will be easy for you. They're just like the last section. So I'm on to number 3. <coughs> Excuse me. On to number 3 here. I'm going to do the word problems. We're going to have three kinds of word problems in this section. This first kind is a ratio word problem. So it says the ratio of an object on planet A to the weight of the object on planet B is 100 to 3. So I think you naturally know what to do. You just go 100 to 3, like a fraction. That's A over B, isn't it? If an elephant, elephant weighs 2,900 pounds on A, so you put the 2,900 on the top, what's it going to be on B? Call this B or X, if you want. So you see the ratio there? So 100 is to 3, as 2,900 is to to B. And then you solve that, cross multiply. Let me bring it over here. So that would be 100 times B is 3 times 2900. That is cross multiply. That's how we solve two equal fractions as we learned in the last section. So 100B is whatever that is. Use my calculator. 87. 100. Last step to finish solving for B. Divide by 100, B equals, just cuts off those zeros, 87. So the elephant must only weigh 87 pounds on planet B. It's amazing. Let's go to number 4. So that was just number 3, even though the writing went into number 4. <clears throat> okay, so number 4 here. Same kind of thing. It's going to be a ratio. So they want me to find Y. So we could say y is to 31, y is to 31, it's going to be a ratio again. Sorry, I'm scribbling there. y is to 31, it's not a decimal. y is to 31 as, and you can take your pick, this one is to that one, or you could have done this one with that one. It, it, it would work the same either way. I'll just do But you got to be consistent. If you're starting with y over here on the top, then you got to put the 3.75 on the top. See how I'm consistent? I started with this one, ended, so this, so if I made, if I made this one the top of the fraction and this one the bottom, then I'm going to make him the top and him the bottom. Just be consistent. You could have done it the other way. Just be consistent. And now, how do we solve it? You know, two equal fractions, cross multiply. 15 times y is 31 times 3.75. What's that? Use my calculator here. 31 times 3.75. I'm getting 116.25. Last step, just finish getting y alone. Divide by 15. So y equals, my calculator tells me, 7.75. So it's just, it's just uh, ratio to equal fractions. Okay, number five here. I'm just going to take this one straight as the words come. Ten times the reciprocal of a number. Ten times something. What? The reciprocal. You know what reciprocal means? One over the number. The number we just call x. I don't know what it is. So I'm just going to say x. So reciprocal of the number, reciprocal of x, is one over x. So ten times the reciprocal of a number equals, there's your equal sign, Equal. So this is all the left side of the equal sign, then the equal sign, 5 times the reciprocal, the 1 over 10, reciprocal of 10. There we go. There's our equation. Now, <clears throat> i got to solve that. It's kind of weird looking. What do you do when a whole number is interacting with a fraction? Remember what we always do. We put it over 1. So the 10 goes to the top. So 10 over x, bring it down here. And the same thing, 5 goes to the top, so 5 times 1, 5 over 10. There we go. Now, how do we solve it? We go diagonal, diagonal, cross multiply. 10 times 10 is 5 times x. 100 is 5x. Last step to get x alone, divide by 5. x is 20. We're done. Okay, here on number 6 says, a company found that an experienced surveyor can survey a roadbed in seven hours. That's 
how long it takes one of them, the experienced one. An apprentice surveyor needs a little bit longer, eight hours to survey the same stretch of road. If the two work together, how long will it take them? So this is the second type of word problem we're going to do in this section. The first type was the ratio problems, the equal to equal fractions. This is now the second kind. I call it working together. They're going to be giving you two people. They'll give you each person's time alone, and then they'll ask you how long will it take them together. Well, let me just give you a formula for how you do the working together problems. It's always going to be 1 over person A plus 1 over person B is 1 over the together time. That formula will always work um, to solve it. So anytime we have, well, like three or four of these in this section, anytime we have a working together problem, we're always going to use this formula to do it. Okay, so let's use it. Here we go. So what's the first person's time? Seven hours, so one over seven. doesn't matter what order they're in. The other one's eight. Is And what's the together? Well, we don't know. That's what they're asking. How long will it take them together? Call that x. So there's our equation. We just got to solve it. Now, how do you solve it? What, what did we learn in the last section about fractions, denominators? We call the hitman and take them out with the common denominator. What's the common denominator? All these guys multiplied together. So 7 times 8 times x. In other words, 56x. 56x. 56x, right? That's what we always do. We multiply the whole common denominator top, top, top. That was the last section. Okay, let's cross. And then what we do, it's a hit man. It takes out the denominators by dividing. 7 goes into 56 8 times. What's left over? 8 and x. 8x plus 8 goes into 56 7 times. What's left over? 7x. Here, x cancels x. 56. So that's 15x. That's 56. Last step. Divide by 15, and there it is, uh, 56 fifteenths. And they do want a fraction, they said, so there it is. And we can't simplify that any further. Nothing divides in, so there it is, 56 fifteenths. If you're interested, by the way, in making that seem more real, if you divide that, it on, if you want a decimal, it'd be 3.73. So that's how many hours it would take them together. It takes one of the people seven hours alone, the other person, eight hours alone, if they work together, 3.73, just under four hours to do the job working together. Again, they want the fraction version, but I just wanted to give you a real-life feel for what that answer meant. Okay, so here we are in question number seven. This is the third and the last kind of word problem. This is a travel word problem. Jogger begins her workout by jogging to the park, distance 25 miles. So notice down here we have a chart, distance, rate, time. I call it the DIRT equation. I had a student years ago that said, you mean the DIRT formula, Mr. Heron? So there it is. That works. It's like the word DIRT, where the equal sign is kind of like an I for the word DIRT there. So D, I mean it, the equal sign is just sitting where the I would be. It doesn't look like an I. D equals R times T, DIRT. Distance equals rate times time. That's what you use for travel formulas. And notice you have six box, six boxes. We have the trip to the park and we have the return trip. So the trip to the park, distance, the trip, the return trip, distance, right? The return trip. She, so she went to the park, which was 25 miles. She then jogs home, same speed, and that takes 30 miles. So that goes home, 30 miles. And... Um, she goes a different route, so she takes the scenic route, goes a little longer. And then we have a box for her rate to the park, and a box for the rate on the return trip, and a box for the time to the park, and the time on the return trip. So six boxes. Let's see how many we can fill in. Um, so we got the 25 and the 30 they already gave us. That was the distance for the trip there to the park, and the trip back that was longer because she took the scenic route. And it says that she did it at the same speed. And it says down here, let R 
be the jogging speed. So, okay, R, R. They're the same, it said. Right? See so what I circled right here? Same speed there and back. So that's R. Now, what about the time? The time. Do we know anything about the time? What does it say about the time? Um, her time is one hour longer. The return trip time is one hour longer. So the return trip time, this is going to be x plus 1, and this one will be x. That's how we do one longer. In any word problem, whenever they say blah, 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 something's one longer, it's x plus 1, and the other one's x. Okay. So now, notice we have two letters, r and x. So whenever you have two letters, that means you're going to need to have two formulas. What are my two formulas? Bring the equal sign down here and here. And this is times. So the first one is 25 equals r times x. The second one is 30 equals r times x plus 1. Okay. So this is a little bit tricky here. We've got two equations with two letters. So how are we gonna how are we gonna solve for this? Well, I'm gonna show you this is kind of a trick one. I'm gonna show you a little trick here. If you multiply this one out, you get Rx plus R times one, right? Which is Rx plus R, is R times one is just R. Okay, and so what am I gonna do with this Rx? Well look up here at the first equation. Rx is just 25. That's what the first equation told me. So that means I can put right in that Rx spot 25, because Rx is 25. So like a trick. Now I've only got R. I can solve for R. Do you see that trick? Subtract 25 from both sides. R is 5. That's what they want to know. The speed of the jogger, 5. And what, what are the units? Well, it's miles and hours. So, miles per hour, mph. That's how fast she's jogging, 5 miles an hour. Okay, so number 8. A human factors expert recommends that there be at least 9 square feet of, four, square feet of floor space in a college classroom for every student in the class. Find the floor space, the minimum floor space for 49 students. So, so this is a ratio problem. There is nine, a little scribbly there, nine square feet for every one student, right, so that's, that's square feet over students. It helps if you write down the units, you don't have to but it'll kind of keep you, uh, help you know what goes in the top and what goes in the bottom. You could do it the other way. It's just whatever you decide to do, be consistent. So if you put square feet on the top, be consistent. Do that on the other side as well. So nine square feet, nine square feet for every one student in the class. Okay, so then 49 students, where's that going to go? On the bottom, because I happen to put students on the bottom. And X square feet. That's what they're asking. So how do we solve it? Diagonal, diagonal. 9 times 49 is 1 times x. So whatever 9 times 49 is, 4, 41 square feet. 4, 41 square feet. Okay, so number 9. Marcus and Tony work for the same company. Marcus lays slab of concrete in 3 hours, Tony in 4. This is working together, isn't it? So let's just say it's going to be, well, here, I'll put it right here, 1 over A plus 1 over B is 1 over together. That's the formula we always use when people are working together. So one of them is 3 hours, the other one is 4 hours, and X is how long it'll take them together. That's what you always do when they're working together. Put 1 over 1 of the times plus 1 over the other time and 1 over X X will be the how long it takes them together. So let's solve. How do we solve when we have fractions? Common denominator, top, top, top. Right? It's what we always do. The hitman takes them out. So that's going to be 3 times 4 times x. Don't forget the x. He's a denominator as well. 
So that'll be 12x, 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 and then cancel. 3 goes into 12 um, 4 times. So that'd be 4x. 4 goes into 12 3 times. 3x. 12 cancels 12. 1 times 12 is just 12. So that's 7x is 12. Last step to get x alone, divide by 7. So it'll take them 12 sevenths, what is that, hours together to get the job done. Now, it says that they get paid $49 per hour as a team. And they want to know the money it's going to cost. So if they get paid $49 per hour and they're going to work for 12 sevenths um, hours together, we're going to multiply that, right? $49 per hour times 12 sevenths hours would equal how much? To how, uh, how much total money will they earn as a team, making $49 per hour as a team times 12 sevenths hours together as a team? Put this over 1, remember? When a whole number interacts with a fraction, cross cancel 7 into 49 7 times. So it's just 7 times 12, 84 bucks. So 84 bucks is what they should get paid for their 12 sevenths hours working together at $49 an hour. All right, so number 10. Suppose two trains leave a station at the same time traveling in opposite directions. Train A travels 10 miles an hour faster than train B. In 3.5 hours, the trains are 336 miles apart. Find the speed of each train. So what equation, this is the third type of word problem, travel. What equation do we always use on travel? The dirt equation. D equals R times T. And then we have six boxes, two underneath each letter for the dirt. And so this is, um, this will be train A. And train B. All right, so let's fill in what we can. Uh, train B is 10 miles an hour faster than train A. 10 miles per hour faster. Is that talking about distance, rate, or time? Miles per hour, that's rate. So B is 10 faster. That's X plus 10, and this is X. Those go in the rate boxes. See, the B is 10 faster, 10 more. Whenever they say 10 more, 10 faster, 10 bigger, 10 further, in a word problem, you have, it's X plus 10, and the other box is X. And those are both in the rate column, in the middle column, because they're miles per hour. That's rate. In 3.5 hours, that's the time. That's the time for both trains. Both trains travel for 3.5 hours. The trains are 300 and 36 miles apart. Now, does that mean I can put the 336 there and maybe put it there? No, that's not right. They're, when they say the 336 miles, it is a distance, yes, but it's not, it's not A. They're not saying train A went 336 miles. They're not saying train B went 336 miles. Well, what are they saying then? They're saying that's how far apart they are, meaning, you know, let me draw it down here. Train A started cranking this way, and train B started cranking that way, right? See what it says up here? Opposite directions. So that means the total separation is 336 miles. So that means the 336 will go down here. It's this box added to that box that's going to equal 336, isn't it? It's those two together. It's however far train A went plus however far train B went, that's the total 336. Well, how do you figure out these boxes? Well, you, uh, you want to make sure you, you notice that the letters up here are not just like randomly put up there like decoration, but they have a very definite relationship. The D box equals the R box times the T box. So this D box here will be the R box times the T box. So this will be 3.5x. And this D box will be the R box times the T box. So this will be 3.5 times x plus 10. And those have to add up to be this. Let me write it sideways. That will be our equation. So we're going to have 
3.5x plus 3.5x plus 10 equals the total distance 336 miles. That's how far they travel. Okay. Now we got to solve that equation. So what do we do? We're going to distribute here. In fact, you know what? I'm going to go to a fresh screen, I think. Was it 336? So distribute. Um. Okay, and 3.5x and 3.5x, that's 7x. Now, how do we f solve for x? Subtract 35. 7x is 301. Last step to get x alone there. Divide by 7. Let me check my calculator on that. I'm getting 43. Now, careful, we're not done. That's x. That's the key, but it's not the answer. That's the key that will unlock any door, but that's not yet the answer. How do we get the answer? We've got to go back to the question. What's the question? The speed of train A and the speed of train B. Which boxes give me the speed? Speed is called what? Rate. There's the rate for train A, and there's the rate for train B. They're under the R. So, so what do I do then? I take this X, which is 43. That's the key. I just go back and unlock whichever doors they ask for. Take that 43 and plug it in for X wherever you need to. So here's X. 43, and here's X. 43. So the rate of train A is... 43, and the rate of train B is 43 plus 10, 53, and both of those are miles per hour in both cases, miles per hour. There we go. Number 11, I'm going to take straight 5 divided by, 5 divided by, the difference of a number in 2. 5 divided by the difference of a number 2, minus 4, whoops, let me be a little more careful, minus, it's actually 4 divided by a number plus 2, equals 4 times the reciprocal, the reciprocal of the difference, this is crazy, the 1 over, that's reciprocal, of the difference, the subtraction, of the number squared, and 4. There we go. That is craziness. So that's the equation we need to solve. Let me bring it to a fresh screen. It's number 11 here. Okay, so a couple things to clean this thing up. This is over 1. Anytime a whole number is interacting with a fraction, put it over 1. goes up there to the top. So this is going to be 4 over. And then this denominator needs to be factored. x plus 2, x minus 2. The other side, I'll just bring them down. Okay, you got to solve this equation. You know what we do with denominators? Multiply through by the common denominator, x minus 2, x plus 2. x minus 2, x plus 2. x minus 2, x plus 2. Okay. So, what happens? Well, Hitman takes out denominators. So what do we have left? 5, x plus 2 minus, x plus 2 is cancel. 4, x minus 2. And these guys cancel 4. That's nice. Distribute. Distribute. 5x plus 10. Minus 4x plus 8, right? Minus 4 times minus 2 is plus 8. 5x minus 4x is just 1x. 10 and 8 is 18. 
Last step to get x alone, subtract 18, and bring it down. x is, what's that, minus 14. Minus 14 is the number. Okay, so here on number 12, to mix weed killer with water correctly, it's necessary to mix 12 tablespoons of weed killer with 2 gallons of water. So 12 to 2, and that's what? What is it? Uh, weed killer to water, right? Yeah. Find how many gallons of water, water, where's water? Bottom, see water in the bottom, are needed to go with the entire box of 24 teaspoons of weed killer. 24. So there is our, it's a ratio word problem, two equal fractions. How do we solve it? Diagonal, diagonal. So that's 12 times x is 2 times 24, 12x is 48. <clears throat> Last step, divide by 12, x is 4. Number 13, <clears throat> two hikers 14 miles apart walking toward each other right away. We know it's a distance equals rate times time problem, a dirt problem with the six boxes, two underneath each letter. Okay, um, two hikers 14 miles apart walking toward each other. They meet in two hours. Find the rate of each hiker if one hiker walks 2.6 miles per hour faster than the other. So let me start there. 2.6 miles per hour. That's a rate, huh? Faster than the other. So one of them is x plus 2.6. The other one's just x. That's what we always do when they say one is faster than the other. Um, what are, they're walking toward each other. So one starts here, one starts there. They walk toward each other till they meet. So um, they meet in two hours. That must mean they both, the time for both of them is two hours. Two hours for both of them. As soon as we have four boxes, let me just take it right there. Well, the two hikers are 14 miles apart. That must mean the total distance they cover is 14. So that 14 is going to go here. It's the total of the two distances, right? It's not it's not hiker one, this is hiker number one, and this is hiker number two here. It's the total distance the two hikers cover, right? One hiker goes part way, the other part way, and they meet, covering the whole 14 together. And so what is this going to be? 2x and 2 times x plus 2.6. Why did I do that? Because the distance box equals the rate box times the t box. So this distance is rate times time, and this distance is rate times time. And now there's my equation right there, right? Because they have to add up. Let me get this out of the way. Because it's got to be the case that 2x, right, the distance hiker number 1 covers, plus the distance hiker number 2 covers, equals 14, because that's the whole gap between them, 14 miles apart, and they, they keep walking until they meet. So solve for x, distribute, 2x plus 2x plus, what's that, 4, 5.2 is 14, subtract 5.2, for most sides, 2x and 2x makes 4x the other side, I don't know what that is. That's 8.8. .8. Last step to get x alone. Divide by 4. 2.2. So now again, that's the key. That'll unlock any doors. We just got to make sure we're clear which door they're asking to have unlocked. What do they want to know? So they come up here. We come up here and we say... Um, so they want to know the speed of the slower hiker, and then they want to know the speed of the faster hiker. Where do we find that? Rate. So put in 2.2 for x, because x is 2.2. Anywhere we see x, it's 2.2. And this one is going to be x plus 2.6. That's 2.2 plus that. So one of the hikers is 2.2 miles per hour. The other is whatever 2.2 plus 2.6 is. What's that? 4.8. That's the faster one miles per hour. Okay, number 14. Basically, it's pretty straight ahead. They're giving me an architect's plan. 3 by 4 is 10. So this is 10, it says, by x. 
So it's a ratio. 3 is to 4. Left is to right as 10. Left is to right here as 10 is to x. Two equal fractions. How do we solve that? You know, we cross multiply. Boom, boom. 3x is 4 times 10. 3x is 40. Last step to get x alone. Divide by 3. There we go, 40 over 3. Okay, number 15, jet plane traveling at 540 miles per hour overtakes a propeller plane. It's going 200. That had a three-hour head start. How far from the starting point are the planes? So we're going to use distance equals rate times time. The Dirk equation with the six boxes, two underneath each letter. And we'll have the jet and then the slow propeller plane here. So the jet travels at four, 540 miles per hour. That's the rate, the speed of the jet. Uh, the propeller plane is two, um, goes at 200 miles an hour. It's his rate. The, um, the propeller plane had a three-hour head start. Now, what does that mean? That means the time for the slower plane is x plus 3, right? Because he had a three-hour head start. He traveled for three hours more time than, than the jet plane. Three-hour head start. X plus 3 is his time. Okay, so I've got four boxes, don't I? So once you got four boxes, how do we get these boxes? It comes from the formula. The distance box is equal to the rate box times the T box. So this is 540 times X. This box times that. And this times that. 200 times X plus 3. Okay, great. Now what? Well, notice that it um, overtakes. What does that mean when you overtake? That means if, if one takes off like this, the slow plane, early, the jet plane leaves later and eventually overtakes, that means he catches up. And when you catch up, your distances are the same. That's what it means to catch up or overtake somebody. Their distances are equal. Same distance, huh? So this distance must equal that distance. Those are both distance boxes. Notice they're under the letter D. So the distance for the jet must equal the distance for the slower plane at the moment he overtakes the slower plane. Those two distance boxes are equal. Solve now. Distribute. 200x plus 600. So now I'm going to uh, get x alone, so subtract 200x from both sides. This is gone, which is 340x is 600. Last step to finish getting x alone, divide by 340. So I don't know if that's uh, reduced. We can count the zeros, so it's 60 over 34. Um, divide by 2. And it'd be 30 over 17. That's x. That's x. Now, do they want x? What do they want? They say, um, how far from the starting point are the planes? How far? How far? How far? What is that? Distance, rate, or time? That's distance, isn't it? So they want me to take this and find distance. So take it over here and plug it into this box or the other one. It doesn't matter. Remember, the two distances are equal when they overtake. So the uh, final thing we do then is take 540 times 30 over 17. 540x. X is 30 over 17 to find the distance so this, how do you, what do you do with the whole number? Put it over 1, cross cancel, um, 17 into 540. Use your calculator. I'm going to do mine. It's, um, oh, it's not nice. So um, I guess, oh, I guess we just, um, I guess there's nothing to do. It's just an ugly fraction answer. It doesn't cross cancel. I just wrote that and it I assumed it would cross cancel. It does not. My calculator gave me a big decimal. So when they don't cross cancel, you just multiply top times top and bottom times bottom. So five forty times thirty, I'm getting sixteen thousand two hundred over seventeen. 
And that is the very ugly answer. Okay, number 16. Car travels 234 miles in the same time that a motorcycle travels 204 miles. Another distance, rate, time, dirt, problem, six boxes, two underneath each letter. We have a car and a motor cycle. So the car travels 234 miles. That's a distance for the car. Um, the motorcycle travels 204 miles. Oops. And the car's speed is 10 miles an hour more than the motorcycle. Speed, that's right. So the car is x plus 10, and the motorcycle is just x. The car is 10 more. So notice I've got um, four boxes, don't I? This is a different four boxes, though. See, normally the other word problems, I had the four boxes on the right. This one's more tricky because um, if you have the relationship D equals R times T, remember that's the original relationship D equals R times T, and you're wanting to find T, you've got to divide by R. T is D over R, so it's D over R. So this would be 234 over x plus 10, and this is D over R, 204 over x. See how that's different than the other problems we did for travel, the other dirt problems? where the blanks were on the left. Look back here. See how on this one the blanks were on the left? So D just is the right two boxes multiplied. But when the blanks are on the right, it's more tricky because T is D over R. According to the dirt relationship, when you divide by R, to get T alone, T alone, you get D over R. So it's the D over R and the D over R. It's fractions. All right, so now what do we do from here? Well, they tell us that, there's the key phrase, same time. This traveling is in the same time, so this time and this time are same, which means equal. So 234 over x plus 10 equals 2 over 4 over x. Those two times are same, equal. So let's solve it. How do we solve two equal fractions? Cross multiply like the last section. 234x is 204x plus 10. Distribute. Going to get 204x plus 2040. 234x. X wants to be alone, so I'm going to subtract 204x from both sides. I get what's that? 30x is 20, 40. Last step to get x alone. Divide by 30. x equals, what is that? 68. Now, again, that's the key. Let's go unlock whatever door they want. What door do they want? Find the speed of the car and the speed of the motorcycle. So, which box has speed? The rate boxes. x is 68. Put a 68 for x there and a 68 for x there. So, the car is 68 plus 10. The car is 78 miles per hour, and um, the motorcycle is 68 miles per hour. So number 17, the quotient, that means the dividing of a number and two, minus one equals three halves. There's the little equation that they're speaking of. How do we solve that? for x. Well, with fractions, you know what to do. Multiply through by the common denominator. 2, 2, 2. Cancels here, cancels here. x minus 1 times 2 is 2, is 3. Um, and then finish solving for x there. Just add 2 to both sides. x is 5. Okay, number 18 is kind of tricky. It's another travel. So let me just write it out. Distance is rate times time the dirt equation with the six boxes like that. Here, let me just move this up a little bit so we don't get confused by the other line. Okay. Now, the pilot can fly 
Now, this one's talking about being with the wind and against the wind. Now, what does that do? I think you know, like if a plane can fly 100 miles an hour on its own, the plane alone, and then if there's wind, say wind of, you know, 10 miles an hour, when it's with the wind, it'll just add to its speed, huh? And when it's against the wind, it'll take that 100 and subtract the 10. So the simple fact is when you're with the wind, it's the plane speed plus the wind speed. And when you're against the wind, it's the plane speed minus the wind speed. So, and, so P plus W, plane plus the wind, when you're with it, and P minus W when you're against it. Okay, so where does that go? Well, those, those are both rates. So it's going to be plane plus the wind when you're with it and plane minus the wind when you're against the wind. 2,300 miles, that's the distance, right? With the wind, with the wind. That's distance with, goes right there. And then 2070 against it. 2070 is the distance against it. All right, and then it says the speed of the wind is 20. So that means I can come right here and, and the, the W, I can replace it with 20. They're telling me the wind speed's 20. All right, and, um, and now... It's just like the last problem. We have the blanks on the right side. What do you do when the blanks are on the right side instead of the left? You divide again, right? Because in the relationship D equals RT, if you want T, which we want the right side T, you divide by R to get T alone. T is D over R. So D over R. So 2300 over P plus 20 and D over R, 20, 2070 over P minus 20. Look at that. Okay. And then what do we do from there? Well, it does say same time. So that means this time and that time, the two time amounts are same, are equal. So 2300 over P plus 20 is 2070 over P minus 20. There we go. Now we solve that by cross multiplying, diagonal, diagonal, 2300, P minus 20, 2070, P plus 20. Distribute. 2300 P minus, what's that going to be? 46,000. You should calculate it 2300 times 20. Here, 27 P plus, mm, is that 4, 14, two zeros, I think. Let me make sure I'm doing that right. I think that was right. 2070 times 20, yeah, 41,400, right? Okay. Um, now we have P, notice, on opposite sides. Always do the letters first. You got to get rid of one of those. So I'll just get rid of the 2070P. Gonzo. So that brings me down with, what, 230P. Equals 41,400. Okay. Finish solving here, add 46,000. So these will cancel. 230p is whatever that is, 41,400 plus six. I'm getting 80, these are big numbers, 87,400. Last step, divide by the 230, divide by the 230, so P equals 380. 380. The speed of the plane, 380. It says still air, because that means just the plane alone with no help from the wind. 380 miles per hour. There we go. That's a hard one. Number 19, last one. It's going to be, they want me to find x, which is right here. You know it's just the ratios 
11 is to x as 18 is to 27. There's a lot of other ways you can do it also. I was just consistent. Left is to right as left is to right. And then how do you solve for x? Cross multiply. 11 times 27 is 18 times x. Uh, what is this going to be? I use my calculator. This is 297 is 18x. Last step, divide by 18. And I'm getting um, 16.5. They said a decimal is okay. So there's the decimal answer. There's the end of the section. That was a long one.